Hi, this is Theo, and as I mentioned to some of you in lectures, I'm going to use the DC Circuit Construction Kit to show you how to use voltmeters and ammeters, and discuss a few of the issues relating to their use. So what we'll do first is create a basic circuit. We've got a battery and a lamp, and once we've connected this circuit up, the lamp lights. You can see that the energy supplied by the battery is being converted in the lamp into heat and light. What we'll do is use a voltmeter to measure some parameters of the circuit. So let's look at the EMF of the battery and we see that's 9 volts. If we reverse the leads of the voltmeter around we'll get a measurement of minus 9 volts and that just tells us how the positive and negative leads of the voltmeter are arranged in relation to the positive and negative sides of the circuit. Given that we only have one circuit element in our circuit, we'd expect all of that 9 volts to be dropped across the lamp. And there we go, we've got 9 volts across the lamp. Let's look at the voltage across the wires. We've got 0 volts between any two points on a wire. However, in reality, the wire would actually have some resistance itself and on this simulation we can turn up the resistance of the wire and we can see now that we actually get a voltage drop across the wire which is smaller or larger depending on how much of the wire we look at and if we look at the voltage across drop across the lamp we'll see that it doesn't get the whole 9 volts some of that voltage is being used in the wire some of the energy from the battery is being converted to heat in the wire Let's put that back to the idealized situation with no resistance in the wire. And let's look at a circuit that includes another lamp. We'll put two lamps in series. Let's get some more wires to make it a bit clearer as to what we're doing. And now we've got two lamps that are lit. The current's less because the overall resistance has increased. Let's show some values. We've got a 10 ohm lamp here and a 10 ohm lamp here. So these lamps are identical in terms of their resistance. And you can also see here we've got 0 ohms in our battery. It's an idealized battery. As we've discussed, the battery in reality would have some uh, internal resistance. Given that the lamps are, have the same resistance, we'd expect this voltage to be split evenly across the lamps. And if we measure it, we can see that's got 4.5 volts and this lamp has four and a half volts although minus because of the way I've put the leads around. Now if we change the resistance of this lamp let's say we make it double the resistance of the other lamp we would expect the voltage across this lamp, let's show the values again, the voltage across this lamp which has double the resistance to be double the voltage across the other lamp. So let's have a look we have six volts across this lamp and 3 volts across the lamp here. So this lamp has double the voltage of this lamp just as it has double the resistance, just as we would expect. What we'll do now is try a different circuit. Let's put the uh, lamps in parallel. We'll move the lamp here and add some more wires. So that we've got one circuit already. We've got a path around which the current is flowing. And let's create our second circuit for the other lamp. And if we check out the voltage, we can see now, because they're in parallel, we've again got 9 volts across the lamps. What you can see though is the current through the lamp with a larger resistance is going much slower than the current through the lamp with uh, a smaller resistance. Let's actually check that out, exactly what the current is. And what we can use to do that is an ammeter. Now for an ammeter we have to put it in series with the circuit element. So I have to break the circuit where I want to measure the current and place the ammeter in series with the element with the other circuit elements and the current flows through the ammeter. This is different to the voltmeter. If I put the voltmeter across, I'm putting it in parallel to the lamp 
whereas the ammeter is in series. Now the current flows through the ammeter, so really we want an ammeter with very low resistance. Here it's an idealized ammeter with zero ohms resistance, so that it doesn't affect the circuit it's measuring. The voltmeter, on the other hand, is in parallel with the lamp, and at this junction where it's connected, some of the current will go through the voltmeter. To make sure that's very little, the voltmeter, we want very high resistance. And here the idealized voltmeter has an infinite resistance. So let's check out the current in the other part of the circuit. We'd expect this to be 9 volts over 20 ohms. We'd expect this to be 0.45 amps, which is half of that that's going through the 10 ohm lamp. And that's what we get, 0.45 amps. We can also check out the current that's going through the battery. that then splits here and goes either way. We'd expect this current to be a sum of these two currents. Let's check that out. And then we go 0 0.9 plus 0 0.45 equals 1.35. And if it's 1.35 there, the other side of the battery must be 1.35 as well. So let's just double check that. We'll put another wire in so it's clear what we're doing. And place our ammeter on the other side of the circuit. And we get 1.35 amps here too, just as we expected. There is one other way of uh, measuring the current. We can actually use a non-contact ammeter. Here you can see I can just put it over the wire and 1.35 amps. There is such a thing in reality, a current clamp, which can be put around a wire in a circuit. But they're usually used for very high currents, say 1,000 amps, and uh, AC currents, where the current is not just flowing in one direction, it keeps reversing direction, like the main current, which reverses direction at 50 times a second at 50 hertz. So we'll leave it there, and you can have a play around with this uh, simulation yourself and have a go at using the ammeters and the voltmeters.